some people say, Rabbi, how come you're yelling all the time? How come you're yelling all the time? One time I had a shiul, and a guy came to the shiul, and it was a good shiul, Baruch Hashem. And uh, after the shiul, the guy comes, he goes, he starts asking me questions, saying hello, do do do. And I start talking. It was the first time he's ever been at a shiur. He's like, wow. Now you talk regular. And I, I said, what do you mean? He goes, no, the, all the time I watch you on shiurs on YouTube, and now I watch the shiur, you're like, yeah, all the time. But now you just talk like a regular. You're not yelling at me. You're not yelling at me. I said, what, do you think I yell all the time? He goes, so how come? Now, at that moment, I realized that he hasn't gotten the point. So to explain to him the real point wouldn't really make a difference. And now, oh, you know, you fluctuate your voice, you change your voice here and there. If after two hours you don't understand the reason of why I'm yelling, you missed the whole point of the shoe. You missed the whole point of the shoe. Now, the thing is, though, is that if you are looking at some of the most successful Kiruv rabbis that we've had in recent generations or in history, you would simply see the same exact thing. Whether you're talking about Arav Shvadron, if you hear any of his lectures, you don't have to understand a word that he's saying, you're already scared. He was one of the Gedolei Israel. He wasn't just like a regular rabbi, he's one of the giant. You hear the uh, Shurim. By Rav Nisim again, Allah wa Shalom. On the smallest things that we don't even think are important, he would get you to a point where you're shaking and you become an expert in it. He starts talking normal, he tells you a joke here and there, and then all of a sudden he says, And you're like, yeah, yeah, stop, stop washing something, wash something, honey, give me the book, give me the book, give me, he just said, Netilat. you're scared, to, you have no idea why he said, Netilat, you're dying so loud, but you're scared to death. From now on, you're going to wash every single time you leave the bathroom. He had a power of speech unlike any other, something unbelievable. Highly, highly recommend anyone that speaks Hebrew to listen to it. I mean, I had a person that literally was like an apikos. Start listening to Shulim, start do tshuva. It's unbelievable. So why is he yelling? Why is Rav Shbadron yelling? Why is there's another famous rabbi in Eretz Yisrael, Rav Daniel Zer. Rav Daniel Zer talks a lot about Pekam I don't think he, I don't think there's a word that comes out of his mouth that's not yelling. He screams the whole time. Now, every one of his shoe, he gives a shoe to a bunch of gangsters. Like, he goes to the worst places, and he gets four or five thousand people. Four or five thousand people. They're scared to death. Gangsters, scared to death. Little tatalis. Okay, okay, Kvodarav. Sure, absolutely. Uh, gangster, the guy just murdered somebody on the way there. Yes, Kvodarav. Yes, yes, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What happened? Scared to death. Starts putting pay us everything. Start doing tshuva. Why? Why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? Now, some people say, yeah, but you know, you could do it a different way. There are many rabbis that do it a different way. There are rabbis that speak, you know, more sophisticated. You know, they, they speak uh, in a certain way where it's, it's low tone. Doesn't it say that all of the words of the Torah have to come in a low voice? Let me explain something to you. There was one time, a guy, two guys were on a, uh, one of these seashores fishing. One guy slipped, fell over into the water. Start screaming, Atzilu, 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 I can't swim, I can't swim. The other guy on top is, I can't swim either, but you don't see me screaming. <laughs> What's the difference between two? What's the difference between these two? The difference is, the guy that's screaming, is in pain. He's in pain because he can't swim. The fool that's upstairs is only considering his own perspective. Of course you're not screaming that you can't swim because you're not in pain right now. You're not about to die. There was one time a businessman, religious guy, 
came into town. In those days, they had different kavod for the Rabbanim. He came into town, and uh, he was hosted. He asked the Keilah, where could I stay? He said, oh, you can stay at the Rabbi's house. The Rabbanit always has different guests. Stay at the house. You come to the Rabbi's house. So this businessman comes on a Friday. In those days, he didn't have uh, the things of today. So when you brought money with you, you would give it to the owner of the house, and they would put it in the family safe. Why? Because money is mukti. You can't carry it with you. You're not going to leave it on your bed. You're scared. So you give it to the family. You give it to the hotel, whoever is the host of the, of the place, and they would put it in a safe for you. And then you would get him. Motzei Shabbat. So he comes in. He meets the rabbinit. He says, the rabbinit says, yes, I can help you. I want to stay. Please. Ta, ta, ta. Okay, no problem. Oh, can you please take this? Now he just gave her money that he worked on for three years. Three years working blood, sweat, and tears to get this money. He's got 10,000 pieces of gold. He gives it to the Rabbanit. Rabbanit said, okay, no problem. Now, Friday comes in. They have a uh, seuda, And then the rabbi gives a shoe. All the kila comes and listens to the rabbi's shoe. And this rabbi was a Ish Kodesh. This rabbi was a person that was in pain because he knew that people were violating Shabbat. He knew that people were intermarried. He knew that people were mistreating the Torah. Like some of these clowns you have in different communities. Whether it's the place in Beverly Hills that has the VIP parking on Shabbat, or it's the other clowns in New York that we just found out about that they're having casino night in the synagogue. Casino singles night. Hashem Yirachem Alenu. A Moshav Letzim inside a synagogue is happening as we speak. Now don't worry, New York is not unique to this. They had it in Florida also, just a few months ago. A Shesh Besh poker tournament inside a synagogue. All of these synagogues are trying to cater to the secular world. By what? By being just like the secular people. And they think that's going to help people do tshuva. They don't realize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu writes very, very strong things against such people and such places. Places like this that have poker tournaments inside the synagogue. Places like this that have VIP parking to a synagogue on Shabbat. Places like this that have all types of things that are against the Torah. Inside the synagogue, Kadosh Baruch Hu says those places turn into houses of idolatry. Turn into churches. It's sad. It's sad that this is happening in many places where... The rabbis are so infatuated with money, they forget about God. So he said, no, no, we're not. We're only doing a poker tournament in the synagogue because it's all tzedakah money. It's all tzedakah money. No one's really winning and losing. First of all, who are you kidding? You're talking to somebody who used to be a pretty good gambler. No gambler goes gambling if there's no money involved. There's no point to the game. You don't play poker for free. You don't play roulette. Oh, I got the number. Yay, what do I get? Nothing. Oh. Yeah, let's play again. No, it doesn't happen. If there's no money involved, there's no gambling. Meaning there has to be money involved at the end. No one's going to stay. No one's going to play. Who are you kidding? It's not money. Oh, no, it's Daka. Yeah, part of it is Daka. Part of it is Daka. But good kind of Daka. Coming from Abu Dazara. And the best yet, they actually think it's kosher money because they had some other rabbis tell them it's allowed. Completely against the Torah. Why? You're teaching people to gamble. You're teaching people to gamble, which is 100% asur in the Torah. And you're doing it in a synagogue, which means you're putting the kosher stamp on Las Vegas. If you're allowed to gamble in a synagogue, why can't I go to a professional place? It's just what? Because there's more money? And the best part yet... It's only for single boys and girls. Hashem yirachem alenu. What kind of crimes are going to be made that night? Now this, Rabotai Karim is happening in a couple of weeks in New York. In New York it's happening. For the kavod of the community, because there are some good people in that community, I'm not going to tell you the name. I'm just hoping they're going to hear this and they're going to do enough that I don't have to mention the name next week because that's my last opportunity to get it to stop. 
But I'm telling you, this Rabutai is not the only place that's doing it. They're doing it in every other place here. They're doing it here in Florida. They did it right next to my house. Place full of clowns. They do it in Boca Raton. They do it in different places. Who said it's allowed to be uh, to gamble? Who said it's allowed to gamble in a synagogue? Who said it's allowed to waste Torah time for such things? Now we're doing Kiruv. Yeah, how many Balei Tshuva did you get at the end of the tournament? Zero. In fact, most people went off the derech at the end. Why? They go to Vegas because they're so hot. For now, for gambling, because they won the tournament. Now they want to go to Vegas and make more crimes. People kid themselves, thinking that there's a different way to help people do Tshuva. Just like this guy that was hearing the rabbi scream on Shabbat on his keilah, he came to the Rabbanit, and he says to the Rabbanit, why is the rabbi screaming so much? Why is he yelling so much? And the Rabbanit says, well, the rabbi is in pain over the fact that Am Yisrael is violating Shabbat, is desecrating the Bet Knesset, is, is violating Hashem's name. So the businessman says, ah, no, I'm religious also, you don't see me screaming. I'm religious also. I'm not screaming anyone. There's a better way to do it. You don't have to scream. The Rabbanit says, Tzadika, okay, no problem. As you would have it, Ishtar Bach Shimo, Motzei Shabbat arrives. Motzei Shabbat arrives. The businessman has to go back home, has to go back, has to leave. He says, ah, thank you very much for hosting me, Rabbanit. Thank you, Kvod Arav. And he waits there. And the Rabbanit says, the rabbi goes back to his learning. The Rabbanit says, okay, goodbye. Thank you for coming. Shavua Tov. The guy stays there, he goes, yeah, Shavua Tov, but are we forgetting something? She goes, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you forget to do Avdalah? Okay, come, come, let's do Avdalah. He goes, no, 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 what Avdalah? I did Avdalah. No, you're forgetting something. He goes, no, no. What, what? the money, the money. Oh, no, don't worry, you don't have to pay me. It's free to stay at the rabbi's house. You don't have to pay me. No, it's free, you can come anytime you want, come stay with us. He goes, no, 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 Kvod Rabbanit. The money, I gave you 10,000 pieces of gold before Shabbat. You gave me 10,000 pieces of gold before Shabbat? <laughs> gave me nothing. Wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry, sir. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov. The guy says, Atsilo! Atsilo! Rishai! Ha! Ha! Criminals! Ha! Ha! He, he starts screaming and yelling. At the... She says to him, Why you scream so much? Why you scream so much? He says, what? Well, how dare you say why well, I scream so much? You just ruined my life. I'm in so much pain. You took all my money. He goes, ah, hold on. He goes to the shelf. He goes, here's your money. But now you know when you're in pain, you scream. You are in pain over your money. So you scream. My husband is in pain over Klal Israel. So he screams. When you're in pain, you scream. It's just that different people care about different things. You're motivated by money. That's what you scream about. The rabbi, he's motivated by helping Klal Yisrael do tshuva. And when he knows that many of them are far, far away from tshuva, far, far away from Gan Eden, they live in illusion, thinking that everybody goes to Gan Eden. They live in illusion, thinking that everybody is perfectly righteous and is going to be saved by the Mashiach. They live in illusion, thinking that Gehenom and punishment doesn't exist because they listen to false speakers. Then what happens, Rabbi Karim, a person that thinks this lives in illusion, the rabbi cries over it. The rabbi is in pain over it. So he screams. Whatever you're in pain over, you scream. That's why we yell. That's why you have to yell. 